Holy crap, guys. Welcome back to the show. We just finished watching Season 9, Episode 5, What Comes After. This is, was Rick Grimes' final episode on The Walking Dead. And mind blown, awesome episode. Just throwing it out there. I, I experienced so much emotions during this one. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I just, there was just so many things going through my mind about watching Rick through all these years and just watching his journey and then seeing him grow and regress and go back and go forward and so forth. And as he's on this journey in this episode, uh, you know, as it's just from the start, and we're just getting straight into it and showing that episode with him in the, in the hospital bed and he's telling himself to wake up. I got to admit, now there's going to be spoilers in all this, so if you haven't watched the episode, do not watch this. Get out of here and then come back and then watch this reaction. You can even see some of my reaction. I was bawling like a little baby. This is ridiculous. So anyways, uh, he was laying in there and he's looking out the window. Remember he saw those birds and whatever. Remember he turned into those helicopters? That right there just immediately just sent me a nod like, is there a chance that he could be saved by these guys? And I'm like... Eh, maybe, but probably unlikely, right? Well, anyways, we'll get back to that in just a little bit. So he, just that starting off with him and that conversation with himself, telling himself to wake up, and he gets back to it. And, I mean, talk about smart move. I would have never thought to take my belt off. I guess but that makes you a great survivor, right? Takes his belt off, throws it over the, the loops. It's just out of reach with his hands, and he lifts himself off the rebar. How intense and exciting was that just to see him? And also hurtful, too. I mean, just seeing how hurt he really is. And as he gets on that damn horse again, which we'll get back to him in a minute, and uh, they start making their journey as he's trying to lead these two huge herds of walkers away. They're so close near to the hilltop settlement and also the forest encampment. And, uh, and so he's in deep trouble. So along uh, Rick's journey here, let's just, we're not going to go through every single thing that happened, but let's talk about it. So uh, he had flashbacks with certain people in his life uh, trying to get himself to, to keep going and moving. And one of the first flashbacks was uh, Shane as he's uh, telling him to to wake up and, and do but basically they have this conversation and they kind of come to terms about what went down and basically when Rick killed Shane now obviously this is all in Rick's mind I mean who knows what Shane will true words he really would have to say to Rick but I mean they were kind of semi inspiring they weren't uh, trying to down Rick I mean it's like dude you come so far you know just gotta, you gotta get up and you gotta keep fighting you gotta keep moving and uh, wake up and so he sees him he sees Herschel uh, uh, R.I.P. Uh, Herschel. You know, he passed away, uh, I think, just a few weeks back. And so, uh, but it was great to see him on screen once again. A final send off to his character, Herschel, and, and then him in real life as well. And so they have a, a, a nice little talk there too, you know, just kind of Rick breaking down and talking about he needs to find his family. And you know, Herschel's even trying to tell him, no, your family is, is here. It's where you are now. And, uh, and so he moves past that. And he also sees Sasha along the way. And mind you, between each one of these, and when he wakens, I mean, one of them uh, is when he's in that cabin where something went down there. I can't remember where that cabin came into play. If any of you guys can remind me what went down, if that was a nod to something, because I know there was two people in there and they were plenty dead and there's a couple guns in there and bullets all over the place. But all the same, he wakens to a zombie about to rip off his face and he barely nearly escapes that one. And, you know, it's just like one after another. I mean, obviously he's passing in and out, which fully makes sense. He's bleeding out so badly. It's amazing he made it as far as he did. And uh, as he keeps going, I'm going to show you a little bit. You're, you're probably going to see it already up in the corner as some of the, I'll call it the reaction couch. I've never done this before on the show, but I knew that I was going to be a mess on this one. I just, Rick's my favorite character. I just, I really enjoy his development and what he's gone through in his journey. And I can just really, I just feel like I can relate to him so much. And so by far, hands down, my favorite character on The Walking Dead, as I do believe many of yours as well. And it was just, it, I just felt the emotions start hitting me. My, my, uh, the music score, score during the entire episode was amazing. Just totally wrenching at your feelings and just, just turning them, right? Just turning them on. And I already felt myself kind of start losing it just earlier on when he had those conversations with even Herschel and Sasha. And even, let's talk about on a, a quick side note, let's talk about Negan and Maggie. So Maggie uh, makes her way finally into Hilltop. She gets there and Michonne is standing right in her way. And I'm like... Is this really going to go down? Are these two really going to fight it out? So they have a conversation, and basically, I was on board with Michonne for a minute, just thinking, Maggie, you got to get past it and get over it. What's done is done. But then Maggie starts giving the true, really reals and what went down. And if it had been Rick, or, you know, and you had a child raised on your own, I'm like, God, she is so right. I mean, you just, you can't help it. She's right. I mean, the, the man deserves to die completely. I mean, there's really no going back and forth on it, which I have found myself doing a little bit. So, but she only hands the keys over. She lets her in and uh, saying, I'll live with the consequences afterwards, whatever. She goes in. So they have this conversation. Uh, she, uh, and, and he's just immediately nailing at Maggie about uh, how he killed her dad, Herschel, how he killed Glenn and the details and so forth. I'm like, dude, you must want to die. Well, in fact, that is it. 
it wasn't that Maggie was her last. I thought Megan was going to try and escape, but I'm just like, well, he's so weak. How would he do that? He wants to die. He's tired. He uh, he wants to see his wife. He's just, he's just, things didn't work out the way he had wanted. He just wants to exit out of this world and be on his way. And Maggie sees that Negan is truly dead for the most part. I mean, it's he's just not there. I mean, I think what um, uh, they've said, you know, uh, Negan's uh, actor has said in the past is that um, you know, Negan doesn't lie. He's, he gives the really reels and puts it out there. And I believe that was not a performance. I believe what he was breaking down and crying is truly Negan's breaking down, almost like Rick when he saw uh, Abraham and Glenn have their heads smashed in in that forest uh, some time ago. So it was amazing to see that breakdown. It was really kind of heart wrenching in a ways, but I mean, I've seen a man just want to die. I mean, that's, that's pretty rough. And Maggie, she did not grant him his wish. She saw that this is pretty much as agonizing and painful of a life that I could wish on anybody. So she put him back in his cell and he walked back in there, moped, slowly walked in there, just went wishing to die and she let him just stay in there. Wow, I mean, good move on Maggie not to kill him. Um, well, at least we think so for now. Uh, but I think she's gonna feel better about herself not doing that, knowing that he is in agony, just like many killers out there who are rotting in prison. I think you would hope that they are also rotting as well, you know, in their minds and what they've done. So that was pretty intense. Let's fly back to Rick. So Rick goes through all these encounters, all these different places, talking to these uh, flashbacks of people. And he also has a flashback um, when he sees everybody. I thought this was so cool. When he goes back to the hospital, this is the, one of the last flashes. And he's uh, walking through uh, the hospital and he sees, you know, don't open dead inside. And it just immediately you flash back to that first episode, first season, and you're just like, wow. I mean, what a journey, you know, we've been on, just remember back, and the board falls out and he opens up the door and inside he sees just a field, a huge field of dead people, including the people that are currently still alive in the universe, like um, uh, Jesus, and I think Maggie was there, uh, and there were some others too, but he saw them all dead, and so he has this conversation as Sasha appears uh, alive to him, and uh, they're talking about... You know, it's okay if these people are gone. They did their part, just like you did. I guess trying to make Rick feel good about the things he's done and come to peace that if this is the end, then let it be the end. And let it be a strong end. And uh, so I thought that was an interesting conversation. Um, I felt typical from probably what Sasha would have been saying to Rick. And so uh, he flashes back out of that and he's heading towards the bridge. And I'm just put, throwing it out there. I called it. I knew the showdown would go down at that bridge. I just, there's no way Rick was going to let that horde uh, those two hordes cross that bridge and make their way towards Hilltop and everything else. Uh, he did come across, by the way, as he went towards the bridge, he came across the uh, the forest encampment, which uh, there's a bunch of dead bodies around there. So that shootout that went down last week, clearly some people definitely died. Uh, didn't see Carol, didn't see anybody like that. Well, so, well, we saw her at the end, so everything's okay there. But yeah, definitely uh, some bad things happened in that shootout. So uh, Rick gets past there, he gigs, makes it to the bridge, he's making it across, and um, you know, it's, they're just right at his tail. And as he's going by, he looks back and he sees a bunch of uh, containers and it looked like military grade. And I'm just like, those are the explosives for the detonating, uh, detonating they're do, doing. And uh, <laughs> I'm just like, immediately right there. And I said, if I'm showing it right now, or maybe you've already seen it, I just, all my emotions just start hitting. I'm just like, Jesus, this is how it's going to go down. And, um, and yeah, there's one last flashback where people, and I know I keep saying that, but there was one last flashback where all the friends came in, uh, Michonne and Daryl and all them, they started killing, and I'm just like, that's not real, it's just a hallucination. I mean, I'm sure it tricked a few people, but uh, when they were there, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, Michonne's talking to him, and then she finally says the wake up, and that says he's coming across, and as uh, these, a few of the walkers made, it, made their way across the bridge, and they are just within a foot of biting Rick, and suddenly an arrow comes out of nowhere and just nails the walker dead. And I'm just like, huh? And we look over to the side, and Rick sees Daryl and all his friends, and it was just, it was just an emotional moment. It was just awesome seeing them all come in, and uh, and and so they they try to rush to his aid, you know. And Rick's just like he's calling him off. He's like, no, 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 please don't. You can't take him on. He knows that more people are gonna die. His friends, his family, and he knows what he has to do. And of course, he raises his gun, just that classic Rick Graham style, and he um he fires straight into the dynamite and just blows the bridge. I just, I lost it. I just could not hold it on. You'll see it here. I can't even hold it right here. It was just such an emotional scene uh, for a final farewell to him. So, uh, so you know, Michonne screaming, crying. That's that's sad in itself. Daryl, watching Daryl break down. How many times does Daryl cry? Never, never. So he's doing it and everybody else. And so um, 
but Rick stopped him. The bridge blew, uh, Rick went flying, and all of a sudden all the well, fiery walkers just started flowing right into the river and the water's just washing them down off. So I thought, wow, what a send off, this is amazing. Um, I hated it, but I love it all at the same time. And then just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, uh, we had uh, seen Jadis earlier talking uh, to her helicopter peeps, just saying like, yeah, I got your A ready and I need extraction, come and get me, you'll know where to find me. These guys already sound like they feel like this could be a double cross, which is interesting. I don't know why they would think that out of Jadis. Uh, I don't think she's ever double crossed them before. And just as this helicopter starts moving its way in, she looks over to see all these burned dead walkers flown down the river and turn around the curve. And who in the hell does she see laying on the embankment Holy hell, it's Rick. Rick was not, he's not dead. He's not dead. And I almost lost my shit right there. Just again, just seeing him alive on the abatement. It's enough, it's enough for me. If he's leaving Walking Dead, that's another, that's one thing in itself. But with the information that we know now that's coming up with, so, uh, Rick is gonna be taking on some actual uh, production uh, in like an actual, uh, like AMC movie uh, for The Walking Dead. And it's gonna be his other travels, I guess, maybe with uh, this other group, um, maybe the, the trials and tribulations that go on down there with Jadis. Uh, maybe there's a love interest there, whoever knows. Um, and they're going to show things maybe over across the seas, like over in Europe, what, what else has been going on in the world. Uh, they're just going to do a whole bunch of different ways of telling Walking Dead stories. And uh, Rick Grimes, uh, Andrew Lincoln will be part of some of those stories. So how amazing and awesome. Um, Jadis gets, her on, gets him onto the helicopter in the last scene. She's like, you're going to be okay. They're going to they're gonna fix you. And uh, he's just there with a mask over his head. And she says, and by the way, she called him a bee. So again, I don't fully still understand what A and B means. I thought A's were good, but now, I, but well, what we do probably know is so. She said it's a friend and he needs help. So B's sound like a good thing, I want to say, but I'm so freaking confused on it. So whatever. If you have something on it, please make sure to mention it in the comments. Uh, I hope you had fun kind of watching the reaction couch, if you will. Uh, I kind of tried to show both of the footage of the show and then me and reacting to it. Guys, I was just a complete mess. I don't usually break down like in most movies like that. I mean, after having kids and stuff, I find myself a little bit more emotional about certain scenes and things around like kids and, you know, losing people and whatever. But uh, the, I just couldn't handle it. I mean, the music and everything was just hitting so hard. I hope you guys had a great time. This episode, I'm giving it. It's, it's done. Ten. Ten. Out of 10, this episode was amazing. It's one of my favorites by far. Yes, because I mean, everything that went down with Rick and his story and what's what's happened to him, but what a send off. And the fact that he is still alive out there doing something good. And then, whoa, watch out. We see a group of new people coming in. They're about to get surrounded by walkers. They are surrounded. They're about to basically get eaten. And suddenly some shots get put off to clear out a nice little section on the side. And who do they run into? This young little girl who has a gun to her hip. And she, uh, they ask her who she is. She looks down and sees Rick's hat, which Carl's hat, whatever. And she says, Judith. And I just said it with him, Judith Grimes. And I'm just like, so, and it was a cool way they did that too. They showed that scene of that barn in a certain uh, way, you know, with the, the landscape and uh, the scenery. And then suddenly it, it, it changed with time. So it has been several years, obviously. Now Judith, I mean, she could be, what, all a bit of, I don't know, 10, 11? I'm a little bad with age, but she could be somewhere around there. And so how exciting to see Rick's legacy. Judith can move forward, and we have not seen the end of the Grimes family. So, guys, with that said, again, 10 out of 10. I love this episode. And, and I just saw the uh, the footage for the next three episodes. You want to say, holy bleep? Yes. Uh, this, I, I'm, I'm on board. Fully on board, ready to go. I mean, I hate that Rick's gone, but... I mean, let's let's face it, guys. I mean, the show's it, the show must go on, right? If people want to leave, they don't do the thing. So let's let's see what they can do. Let's have some fun. Let's get back on board for all you haters out there who haven't been on the show. Staying in it and, and seeing this happen tonight has made it all worth it, and I look forward to seeing what's to come. So with that said, I'm Mike Schilling. This is the ZMM Show. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And guys, we will see you next week and see where the hell this season is going. See ya.